Hey everybody, today I'm going to answer the question so many of you have been asking, and that is, why do we have flashbacks? But make sure you stay tuned till the end because I have an exciting announcement and a giveaway. Yay, yay, yay! So stay tuned. Like I said, today we're going to answer the question, why do we have flashbacks? But before I get into the real reasons why we have them, I want you to first understand what flashbacks are. A flashback is when we are pulled back into a traumatic event, meaning in our mind, it feels like we're back there. It can feel like it's happening to us all over again. We, for all intents and purposes, feel like we are like time traveling. We're back in that event and it's happening to us again. And the reason that these happen is due to triggers. This is usually something within our five senses, meaning we smell something like a similar smell to the time when that happened. Maybe we're outside and we smell pine trees and that triggers it. It could be a sound, someone's voice potentially. It can be a lot of different things like that. And that's why a lot of people feel like they happen out of nowhere because we might not know which sense triggered it because our body responded without our mind even knowing what was happening. And the one thing I want you to hear with this video is that if these go untreated, they can get worse meaning they can happen with more frequency and they can last longer. So please, please, please reach out to a mental health professional in your area and get help sooner rather than later. And now to get into the nitty gritty of why we actually have flashbacks. Something that was interesting for me to learn when I was researching for this video is that we have two types of memories. And I talked about this with Alexa a little bit in some of our trauma videos. I will link those in the description if you want to watch those. But we have two types of memories, one being non-traumatic, meaning nothing scary happens, we don't fear for our life or someone else's life, and we're kind of just going about our day. If you've seen the movie Inside Out, remember, all these little memories are being made into these perfect little marbles, they're rolled down the chute, and they're filed away accordingly. I like to think of it almost like we're making stories in our day and we're filing them in a filing cabinet, like the story of my trip to the beach. And I, my memory is writing down all the things that happened that I remember from the day. It puts those papers in that file and it puts that file in a folder. That's non-traumatic memory. It's easy to tell the story to myself later. I remember it. It's so clear. The things that were important and that happened that day, I can easily recall because they're in order the way that it happened. And some things that weren't important, like what the maybe what kind of car we drove or what color shirt I was wearing, those things might fall by the wayside because those little details aren't important to our story. But overall, we have a complete cohesive story in relation to non-traumatic memory. Now here's why we have flashbacks. We're gonna talk about traumatic memory and the reasons why this is different and why flashbacks occur, okay? Traumatic memory is when we're going about our day doo, 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 and we encounter something that is so overwhelming, so scary, so frightening that our brain can't process it because it's like, what the hell is going on? Oh my God. And it's just too much, right? Traumas can feel like things are happening too fast. We can feel frozen, like we can't even help ourselves. We can try to run and get caught. There can be so much going on that our brain, frankly, can't process it. And so instead of non-traumatic memory, when it decides what's important and what's not, and it's able to write it down in a story, today I went to the beach, it is like scribbles, uh, scary, a car, a uh, tree. It's scribbling down anything it can think of. And it's like the papers, it's like they're thrown through a shredder over your whole filing cabinet. All the drawers are open and the paper's going everywhere. The way that I describe it with that inside out reference is like those marbles are like smashed on the ground and the splinters fly everywhere. And that is why we have flashbacks. If the paper or the splinters have flown everywhere, they're over other memories, they're in other pockets that they're not supposed to be in, when we're going about our day, when we're recalling some information, we smell something similar, we think of something similar, boom, we have a flashback, we've hit that splinter, or we've run into that little slice of paper and it brings us back to that traumatic memory that we've tried to like, hide away or not deal with and just kind of shake it down to the bottom and shut the drawers. I hope that gives you an idea of kind of why they happen and why they feel like they come out of nowhere because essentially we don't know where all those bits and pieces have landed. We don't know when we're gonna trip up over them, when we might encounter a part or a little splinter, a little particle of that memory and it can send us boom, right back there. And just so you know, the most common symptoms of trauma are hypervigilance, which means we're always on edge. Every door slam, every quick movement, just we're always looking out because we always fear for our safety. The next, and it kind of rolls off of that and you can see why, is avoidance. We don't wanna be in situations that make us kind of scared. We don't wanna talk about that traumatic thing because it feels so overwhelming. 
The next is flashbacks, what we're talking about right now. And the last one is dissociation, which if you remember my videos with um, Alexa, we talk about fight or flight, right? Feeling like we wanna run, we're, over, we're hyper vigilant, right? We're on edge. But then the other side, when we go down to freeze, is when we dissociate. That's when we're, our body's like, poof. Our, I feel like our brain is pulling the parachute. It's like, I can't handle this, bye-bye. It's too much, it's too overwhelming. And so those are some of the most common symptoms of trauma. And if you find yourself experiencing any of these things, the good news is there is help available and there are people out there who are just waiting to help you process through the trauma and get better. And so if you have the ability to see a trauma specialist, that's my number one recommendation. Not just a therapist, but a trauma specialist, meaning a therapist who actually specializes in this sort of thing so that they can help you walk carefully and gingerly through your filing cabinet or through the area where you keep all your marbles and help you pick up all those pieces of paper and tape them back together or gather all the splinters and glue it back into that marble. And yes, there's gonna be times where it feels overwhelming and we do go into the dissociation or we have a flashback, but knowing that you have a safe person there to help you keep grounded, to slow down if they're going too fast, to be that voice that maybe you hear when you aren't really present anymore and help pull you back into the room. It's important to have that person there and that's why it's so pivotal to work with a trauma specialist. There's also EMDR, it's another type of trauma therapy. I'll link my video to it in the description. But that can be super helpful as well. And there's also medication options. I know not everyone wants to take medication and that's not always the best remedy, but sometimes when we're drowning in the symptoms and we just can't get any work done in therapy because we can't even talk about it, we have a flashback all the time, or anxieties through the roof, there can be some medications that can assist you with that. So please, if that's where you're at, talk to a psychiatrist, talk to a doctor in your area and figure out what's the right fit for you. But honestly, I think working with a trauma specialist is best because they know about how to pace. They can tell when you're dissociating. They're usually very comforting, very warm people and they can help you slowly put your story together so that we don't feel like we're tripping over things that cause flashbacks because that thing, trust me, with the right work and the right therapist, that horrible thing that happened doesn't have to have power over us anymore and it won't have power and we won't have flashbacks anymore. You can actually make them go away. So if you're hurting, please reach out. Help is available. And like I said, stay tuned till the end because I have an exciting announcement and a giveaway. The anxiety workbook is coming out. Ta -da! I have submitted it for approval. And if by the time this video comes live, Apple has been like, this is amazing, then click the link at the top of the description and go and purchase it and check it out. I'm hopeful that the approval process isn't long, but it'll come out this week for sure. And as a thank you for your patience because you've been so patient waiting for the anxiety workbook to come out, Zuru has sent me 15 fidget toys. You know these super cool cubes that everybody's loving? So I would love to send these to 15 people. Let me know in the comments and I will reach out to you, get your address, and I'd love to send these beautiful, beautiful fidget toys your way because I know that it's really helpful with those of us who struggle with anxiety. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Are there other techniques and tools that have helped you with your flashbacks and help you overcome that? Let us know. And I will see you next time.